Hello everyone, my name is Dan the Tutor. This is a clip from one of my weekly group tutoring sessions at the University of Delaware for Physics 201. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you and enjoy. Next up we have the pulley example, everyone else's favorite problem. I like pulley problems because they're hard, and that's the same reason why most people don't like pulley problems, so whatever. I have two crates here, crate A and crate B. I know that crate A, well, before I even give the masses, let's say this is going to be a conceptual question. Hopefully you know the answer to this. There's a very right answer and a very wrong answer. You'll find out which is which pretty soon. Let's say mass B is lighter than mass A. In other words, let's say mass B, let's just say is two kilograms. Let's say mass A is five kilograms. No friction, no friction. My question for you guys, and you don't have to say this out loud, just you know, think of it in your heads. Will crate B move if crate A is heavier? What do you guys think? Just think about it in your heads. You don't need to have an explanation necessarily quite just yet. But I will tell you the answer to that question is absolutely the crates will move. Absolutely. You may be thinking, why is that? Crate B is lighter. Here's why. This is a force problem, right? So free body diagram, that's the first thing we do. We have two boxes this time, which means we're going to have two free body diagrams to write. So, I mean, just since I already gave masses, we'll use these ones. We'll say mass A is 5. I'm going to write it over here. Mass A is 5 kilograms. Mass B is 2 kilograms. Now let's draw a free body diagram. So I'm going to start with crate B because I think it's a little bit easier. We have gravity going down. I'm going to call it M sub B times G because obviously I'm going to have M A G over there. Just want to make sure I use different variables, which is always good practice. Then there is a force pointing up on B. What is it? That's right. It is tension, tension in the rope. I'll call it T. Now let's think about the forces acting on box A. Oh, and by the way, there's, you may be thinking to yourself, is there a normal force pointing outward from the wall? Normal force like that. The answer to that question, no. Why not? Well, the box is not touching the wall. If the box was touching the wall, then yes, there would be friction. But it's not touching the wall, so you don't have to worry about that. Then you might ask a question, will you ever see a pulley problem where the box here is touching the wall like that? I'll tell you this, I in all my years, I've never seen a question like that, so I would say don't worry about it. So now box A, we already said gravity pointing down. We said there's no friction, so we don't need to worry about that. We do know there is going to be a normal force on box A because it is touching a surface, and so normal force will point straight up. And then we have one more force, it's tension, and that points to the right. And by the way, which tension's bigger, the tension connected to box A or the tension connected to box B? And the answer to that question is they are equal. Hopefully you knew that already. But which of Newton's three laws explains why they're equal? First law, second law, or third law? You don't have to say it out loud, just think about it. And the answer to that question is it's Newton's third law. Every action or force has an equal and opposite reaction force. And that's what tension is right here. So these two tensions are going to be the same. They are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. Now we made our free body diagram. And by the way, this is why the crates are moving. Just look at crate A. I see that up and down forces cancel each other out, which is good. But look in the x direction. I have tension pointing to the right and no force pointing to the left to cancel it out. In other words, if there's only a force pointing to the right, box A must be moving to the right which therefore means box B must be falling down. Make sense? Okay. So now we're done the free body diagram. Step two is to make our sum of forces equation. So once again, I'm going to ask the question, are we dealing with F net X? Oh, sorry. Forgot to ask the actual question. My bad. I want to know what is that tension in the rope? What is that tension in the rope? Very common question with pulleys. Okay, so now my question is, what is what is my sum of forces equation going to be? Am I looking at F net in the X direction, right minus left? Or am I looking at F net Y up minus down? Think about that. And I'll tell you that the answer is neither. 
Why is it neither? Well, it was kind of a trick question, but it's because look at box B. Box B is moving up and down, right? Box A is moving left and right, or at least that's the way it could move. It would make no sense to only focus on left and right or up and down because these boxes are moving in different directions. Okay, well then how do we account for that? Great question. So here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say the positive direction. I'm going to define a new positive direction. I'm going to say this blue line is my new positive direction. In other words, when A moves to the right, that's positive. When B moves down, that's positive. Why? Because that's the direction of motion. Object B wants to be moving down. Object A wants to be moving to the right. And once I use this new system, I call, well, Fnet system. F net comma SYS, which is short for system. I'm going to say it's all the forces going in the direction of motion minus the forces going out of the direction of motion. To me, I typically say clockwise and counterclockwise because to me, this kind of reminds me of circular motion, but it doesn't seem to work for all the students I meet with. So I don't use that example anymore. But if it makes sense to you, clockwise minus counterclockwise, you can think of it that way too. But let's talk about what this is going to be either way. So I'm going to deal with one force at a time. Let's start with MBG here, the force of gravity on object B. Is that going to be positive or negative? Well, is that force in the direction of motion or not? Look in the direction of that black arrow compared to the blue arrow. Does that point in the same direction? Yes. Okay, great. That means MBG is positive. Even though force of gravity here, MBG, is pointing down, which I said before was negative, I made a new positive direction because pulley problems, you need to. You need to, you need to do this, you need to look at the system, and why is that? Well, I'll tell you this, because we need to find the acceleration first. Like, I know I asked for tension, but we need to find acceleration first, and the way we do that is we write F net sys. So I'm gonna make a note here. Do this to find acceleration first, before we actually solve the question. And you're going to have to find acceleration first whenever you have objects with two or more objects in them. So assuming there's no questions right now, MBG, we said pointed downward, even, even though that's normally negative, I'm saying that's positive right now. This tension right here, the one that points up and is connected to object B, notice that points opposite the direction of motion. It's going to slow object B down. So I'm saying minus T. But then notice right here, when I have this tension force right there, now that pulls on object A in the positive direction, in the direction of motion. So even though we had minus T, we now have plus T. Yes, these tensions cancel out, which you may be thinking, well, that's not good. I'm supposed to solve for T, and now they just canceled out. I'm telling you this is a good thing because, again, we need to find acceleration first, and now we're only going to have one unknown variable. We're only going to have one known we're only going to have one unknown variable. It's acceleration. We can find it, and then we're going to use that acceleration to find T tension. Okay. So I have a quick question. Go for it. Why did we start with the, with the B crate? We could have started with A. I just arbitrarily chose it. Okay. The nice thing is the way we do this, we're going to count every force. We're going to count every force so that we're not missing one. And now speaking of missing some forces, let's deal with normal force next. The normal force pointing straight up question is that pointing in the direction of motion or away from the direction of motion again that's going to be a trick question notice it's perpendicular to the direction of motion so that means it's not even going to show up in our equation for fnet system and the same is going to be true for mag when would normal force in mag show up well that would show up if i asked for fnet in the y direction for object a i repeat those two forces show up in the fnet equation in the, in the y direction, the y axis, for object A specifically. Obviously, we don't have to deal with that now. The only time you would have to deal with that ever is if there was friction in this problem, because again, normal force shows up in friction, and that's what we would need to solve. So, since normal force and just friction in general don't matter for this problem, we can actually just ignore normal force and MAG, which is great. And these are all the forces that we have going on in Fnet system. Notice it's it's really just one. It's MBG, which is actually kind of nice. And then again, we set this equal to Newton's second law tells us mass times acceleration. Again, whenever you write equals MA, you should immediately be thinking, do I know this acceleration? 
Do I know this acceleration? Is it zero this time? Is it zero this time? Well, do I have constant velocity? Did I say in the problem that the velocity was constant? No, I did not. We do not know that acceleration, which is fine because we're gonna find it because that's the only unknown variable right now. We know mass B, it was two kilograms. We know G is 9.81. This mass right here, is that mass A or mass B? Again, trick question, I love trick questions. And that's because since we're talking about the system, we're talking about the system, it's both MA plus MB, both of these masses times our acceleration. Any questions so far? Great, we're almost done this one. So now I'm saying, simplifying it, MBG equals mass A plus mass B times our acceleration. I can just divide both sides by mass A plus mass B. We get acceleration equals mass of B times G divided by mass A plus mass B. Again, I know all these variables I can plug in right now and solve. Mass B is two, G is 9.81 divided by mass A is five plus mass B is two. So then we will get a final answer of, let's see, two times 9.81 divided by five plus two is seven. We'll get a final answer of acceleration equals 2.80. Actually, I should not say final answer because this is definitely not the final answer, but we're very close now to finding the final answer. And so now the last thing I'm gonna say for this is, again, we focused on the system, right? Well, to find tension, to find tension, I need to look at one block individually. I can look at A or I can look at B. Let me erase some of these circles because it's kind of getting confusing. I can look at either object A or object B. I'm going to, I mean, either one will work, you know? Either one, you're gonna get the same answer for tension. Let's just do object A, and you'll see why I chose A in a second. So I am looking at F net in the X direction for specifically object A. Notice how I love my notation because whenever I use good notation, I know exactly what I'm gonna be writing. I'm writing F net X, which is all the forces to the right minus the forces to the left, specifically for object A. I look back at my free body diagram, I look at the forces in the X direction acting on object A. There's only one, it's tension. So I'm saying F right, which is T tension, minus F left, which there's no forces in the left direction, so that's it. T equals mass times acceleration. Again, what's that acceleration? Is it zero? No, it's that 2.80 number we just came up with. And then again, the mass, this time, it's not mass total. It's not mass A plus mass B. It's only mass A. Why? Because my notation told me it's only block A we're looking at right now. So just to reiterate, with pulley problems, first look at the system, then look at one of the blocks individually. The reason why we look at the system is because we're looking for our acceleration, and once we find the acceleration, we can find anything we want to. Easier said than done. So if you're not good at pulley problems, I'm going to tell you to practice, because that's the only way you're going to get better. So tension equals mass A, which is 5 times A, which is 2.80. I plug that in a calculator. I'm gonna get tension equals 14, I think. Let me confirm. I like mental math. Yeah, it's 14, cool. So the units are Newtons for tension, and that's the answer to our question right here. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want me to start doing free weekly group sessions at your university, please post in the comments below or email me at dan at danthetutor.com. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.